Jack arrives in Houston, Texas to visit John, one of his buddies during college. They meshed on LinkedIn and decide to meet up again, just to talk about their careers, families, all of that. Jack came all the way from New York City. So Jack's over there and he sees a car drive, uh, coming closer to him. He recognizes it's John. Yo, John, how are you doing, man? I'm good, Jack, just hop in. So Jack hops in. When did you buy, buy this car? Ah, oh, two months ago, John's dad. I got a discount at a car dealership. This car's from 2010. And Jack thinks, what, 2010? It looks brand new. Yeah, I put all the new parts in myself. Hey, it's a good car. Uh, okay, so where are we going now? John said, let's go to the Starbucks. I want to get some coffee, then we can go on the road. So they go to Starbucks, but Jack noticed that John drove in a slow manner, abnormally slow. And uh, Jack was a bit concerned with that because he thought to himself, John has been driving cars for the past 15 years. He even was driving illegally before he was even uh, of age to get, to get a driver's license. So this guy must know how to drive cars. So why is he driving so, drive so slowly? Long story short, they leave Starbucks and now they're on the road heading towards uh, the Mexican border. It's not that uh, busy on the highway, so they, the highway is almost empty. So, Jumpkins ride faster and faster. They listen to the radio and all of that. But eventually, um, Jack told them, John, you need to slow down over here. You're going above the speed limit over here. Uh, don't worry about it, Jack. It's going to be fine. They don't really pay attention to it. Eventually, the car went faster and faster. And Jack, and Jack said to you, John, seriously, you're getting us, you, 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 you get yourself, you're getting us killed over here. I mean, what the heck are you doing? We can crash like this. And Jack actually got really kind of pissed off thinking, John, what the heck? Are you trying to get us killed? And John reveals, well, there's one thing I didn't tell you about this car. The brakes are defect. Uh, the brakes are defective. At that moment, Jack freezes. And Jack, uh, Jack said, what do you say? Well, when I bought the car, you know, the brake system was so damaged and it would cost me $300 more to fix it. And I didn't want to spend the money on it because I want to spend the money on other stuff. So I decided if I just drive the car in a slow way, I can handle it. And then Jack told, screaming at him, are you effing insane, John? You drive a car where the brakes aren't working? Don't you know this is a felony? You can end up in prison for this. Don't you know you can, you, you, you can get yourself out of skilled in traffic by, by doing this? What the heck are you thinking, man? It's not really that bad, Jack, John said. And a long story short, they, uh, uh, they both survive. Jack leaves the car and reports John to the police. Now, there was a parable. In this parable, what warning symptom did Jack receive that something was off? When they, when they went to Starbucks and John was driving so slowly, abnormally slow, that should have been the moment that Jack called it out saying, uh, John, why are you driving so slowly? You've been driving for over 15 years, since you were 12 years old. I know you, it was illegal for you to drive 12 years old, but you did it anyway. By the time you had to get your driver's license, you passed the exams all at once. You even drove trucks. Because you were a trucker for a while. How the heck are you driving so slow? Like you are a teenager, you just learned to drive a car. What, what goes on? Jack should have called it out. And he, Jack would have noticed something's amiss here. 
But Jack brushed it off. And now Jack ends up in a life-threatening situation. Now, could Jack have known that this man was so out of his mind, he would drive a car with a broken uh, brake system? I mean, the fact alone, the man had the money to fix the, br the, brake, the brake system and he didn't do it, shows you he's out of his mind. I mean, you renovate a car, you put all the modern parts in it to make it look fancy, but it does have a, a, a brake system that works? Well, anyway, I've used this parable to explain the following to you. Reprobates, whether they're narcissists, sociopaths, psychopaths, that's how they are. They're like a car without any brakes. Thing is, the brake system is there, but it's so damaged and defective, it is the same as if they don't have any brakes. If you drive, if you drive a car with any brakes, you put yourself in, you, you, what are you doing? You, it's, it's like you're going on a suicide mission, simple as that. Drag others with you. If you enter a bus or a truck without the brake system or, or a defective brake system, what the heck? You should never do that. Now, I'm going to give another parable now. Yet it's, it's a guy called um, Fred. Fred married a woman called Mary. Mary has a nephew, Bob. Now, Fred is a billionaire, but he does want everyone to know. And Mary keeps her mouth shut. Bob only knows that his uncle-in-law is a wealthy businessman. That's all he knows. One day, Fred buys a Bugatti for Bob. And Bob's jaws almost dropped. He almost, became, he almost was, he was paralyzed for a few seconds, thinking, what the heck? Bob always wanted to drive a Bugatti. But he could never afford one. And when he went to car shows, he was never allowed to come close to a Bugatti. Now he got his own Bugatti. He was happy he received the gift. Two weeks later, Fred sees uh, Bob riding a bicycle in the rain. So Fred decides to pull him over and think, uh, Bob goes on, what happened to your Bugatti? Oh, it's, 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 a, it's well, it's well to worry about that. Then another week later, Fred saw him again on the bicycle. And first thing, what goes on over here? Long story short, Fred found out that Bob dropped the Bugatti somewhere near the highway. He crashed the Bugatti and, and just left. And Fred is losing his mind thinking, what? If this guy didn't want the Bugatti anymore, he could have sold it. And if he would have sold the Bugatti, he would be a millionaire now. I mean, what the heck? So he had the opportunity to become a millionaire by selling the car, or he could keep the car like he always wanted. I mean, what the heck was going on in this guy's mind? So later, Mary asked her nephew, Bob, goes on, and Bob told her, uh, Auntie, I have to keep putting gas into that car. And Auntie told him, well, duh, Bob, it's not an electric car, so it runs on gas. So of course you have to put gas in it. Just like you have your iPhone that, or your Android phone into charge. Are you going to complain all things to charge your phone over and over again? Are you going to complain that you have to brush your teeth on a daily basis? I mean, come on now. It's natural that, you have, that whatever you have requires maintenance. Even our own physical bodies require maintenance. And uh, Bob said, Auntie, I don't want you to preach to me. Leave me alone. You bother me. Also, Auntie was losing my thing. What well, that goes on over here? Well, let me tell you. That's how a reprobate is. A reprobate is all about getting ease continuously. A reprobate does not want to deal with any maintenance, neither in their relationships nor in life in general. Now, a reprobate, as I mentioned before, is like a car where the, braking, where the brake system does not work. It's so damaged that it's like there are no brakes. Look, as a human being, you are a union creature. You are, you are a spirit essence in a physical body. You are the spirit essence. You're not the body. The body is an extension of you. The body has a natural intelligence to it. If your body, if your body is exhausted, you become sleepy. 
if your body lacks nutrients, you become hungry. If your body is kind of dehydrated, you become thirsty to hydrate yourself. So the body has a natural intelligence to it. Another thing, if, you, if your body perceives danger, the fight or flight response kicks in. And you get adrenaline to either fight situation or to run away from situation. So our bodies have their natural intelligence. But as a spirit essence, you also have this spiritual balance to keep you psychologically, keep you sane and stable on a psychological and emotional level. Now, with a reprobate, the physical balance is still there. If those a bit slow down, with a reprobate, the spiritual balance to keep them psychologically, emotionally stable and sane is gone. So. A common individual may act selfishly or may act in a narcissistic way, only think about themselves. But eventually, they get tired of their own behavior and especially get tired of their own excuses. And because they feel so horrible about their own excuses, eventually they push them to become better, to either apologize or actually improve their behavior. With a reprobate, this spiritual balance for their for their, psych, for their psyche and their emotions, it does not, it's damaged. So it's, it's the same as non-existent. So they have no off switch. That's why they're locked into a permanent, survi- into a permanent survival mode where it's all about them. The reprobate, whether, whether the reprobate is a narcissist, sociopath, psychopath, doesn't matter the degree of reprobation they're in. The reprobate has no balance when it comes to their psychology and their emotions. They don't. They're locked into a permanent survival mode where it's all about them. Now, they know very well that they are a miss. They know very well that they're unacceptable in in how they they behave and and according to their attitude. They know their attitude and their behaviors don't add up. They know that in reality, you need to do your part towards other people. They know that in reality, Social relationships require maintenance. It also requires you to take responsibility and be accountable and trustworthy towards others. That requires effort. And that's effort the reprobate doesn't want to do. They're there, they want to take, 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 but it comes to them giving back, they're nowhere to be found. Thing is, as social creatures, we need social relationships to remain sane and stable. And in social relationships, there needs to be a balance of giving and receiving. The rapper base all about receiving, but they're not about giving. So they're, they're unstable in that part. And it's another thing. They would never accept that bad behavior from anyone else. So the rapper base knows they're unacceptable. To know that if people figure out what they really were, people run away. So they are continuously afraid of being abundant. Now, it's their own fault because they should actually look within, do the inner work and improve. Look, there's a difference between someone being mentally ill and someone uh, uh, being neglectful. If someone is mentally ill, they cannot function properly because they've been damaged by the environment. So what happens now is they need intervention to recover. But if someone is neglectful, they're actually damaging themselves by always wanting to escape. So they're damaging themselves and they're also damaging other people. But there's the thing, because they couldn't care less about their own well-being, they don't care about other people's well-being also. So a reprobate is an evil individual. They're evil. Everywhere they go, they're dragging others into their self-destruction. And then they walk away like nothing happened. So who's the one losing? The people around them. Because they're already lost. They're already damned. They're already doomed. It's people around them they are losing but not realizing what they're dealing with. Now, reprobates tend to cover up uh, how um, self-destructive and damaging they are. But even then, they can only keep up the performance for so long. At some point, they will come with some excuse to build themselves out. So understand this. There is no way you can be safe, neither on a short-term nor long-term with a reprobate. A reprobate is an evil individual. You need to get away from them as soon as possible. 
you failing to admit when someone is a reprobate is on you. Because now you keep yourself in danger. Even the reprobate would laugh at you think, what the heck are you doing? Listen, they know very well what they're doing. They know they're not acceptable. Well, the thing is, when a human being's spiritual balance has, has been damaged, that means they have no psychological or emotional balance either. Now, that emotional and psychological balance can return, it can recover, but it will take a lot of therapy. And it's going to be quite painful and embarrassing. Well, embarrassing on the part of the one going through it, because it's not embarrassing looking for help, so not, but it can feel embarrassing because they need to admit all these defects. Thing is, what makes the reprobate a reprobate is because they don't want to go through the pain of recovery. So they end up remaining damaged and broken, and now they're damaging themselves further and damaging others in the process. So they lose all care for themselves. Now they still have the bodily balance, so that's why the only thing that works on a reprobate is intimidation. Let me give an example. Let's say you're a tourist walking around taking pictures. Um, let's say you're in the Copenhagen and you're taking pictures. And you have this guy telling you, hey, watch out your cameraman. You filmed me. Show me, your fo- show me the footage. Show me or else I break your camera. Thing is, the guy accuses you of photographing or filming him without his consent. Issue is, you're both in public and in public you have a right to film around you. That he can't help that is his problem. Now, he wants to turn into your problem by exercising some type of control over you, trying to break your camera. Now, if the police hears about this, he's arrested. He's arrested. As a matter of fact, if it was the police officer walking around with the body cam and he noticed it's being recorded, do you think he's going to tell the police officer, sir, I don't want to be recorded, shut the thing down or else I'm going to break your camera? He wouldn't do that because he'll be in jail. Would that same individual go around uh, with a baseball bat destroying all the security s- cameras and CCTV cameras in public? No, because he'll be arrested and he'll become a felon spending time in prison for damaging public government pop- property. So it's only with you where he perceives that he has the ability to get away with it that he does it. Now, in the world, it often happens that people act based on what they can get, can get away with. Let's say you enter a bus and someone's on the phone talking a little, not loud, but a, but a bit hard. And someone next to them says, hey, shut up, man, I don't want to hear this. Quiet. Let me tell you, if it was someone in a uniform of rank, whether it's a police officer or a mayor or whatever, would enter, do you think they would act the same way? Likely not. Because they know this individual with rank can trigger consequences on me, they will haunt me. Do you think in a courthouse they will talk that way towards the judge if the judge is going along about something? No, because they'll be arrested for contempt of court. So, someone does not have to be a reprobate to have selfish and narcissistic tendencies. Just know that whether someone's a reprobate or not, both want to stay away from harmful and bad consequences on themselves in the long run. Now, the common individual, they're selfish, narcissistic, eventually, as I mentioned before, it backfires on them, and when they feel embarrassed and painful, that pain and feeling of embarrassment push them to become better. So the embarrassment they feel and the shock by their own behavior is only temporary. Some need therapy, but okay, it's still temporary. With the reprobate, they're haunted by the shame, they're haunted by the embarrassment. Why? Because they just won't admit that they are the ones who are defective. Again, if you're mentally ill because you, were mel- because you were neglected or abused or whatever, that's not you. Admit you have a problem now, get better. That's it. But for the individual that never wants to admit that they have any defect or any um, deficiency, they're the ones eventually they become reprobates. And let me tell you, once someone has become a reprobate, it's going to be very hard for them to ever recover. Someone can be narcissistic, someone can be selfish, someone can be a hothead, all of that. But it's more likely they will change for the better. Once one turned into a reprobate, 
I don't care whether it's, whether it's in the level of a narcissist or sociopath or psychopath, once one turns reprobate, it's extremely hard to have the effort recover. Are the reprobates in the recovery? Yes, of course they are, but it's quite rare. So the reprobate is most likely and probably doomed for the lake of fire, simple as that. A believer can never become a reprobate because of the spirit in them. So the believer will crash anytime they hand towards reprobation. The thing is, the reprobate is just like a car without any brakes on it. And it's just, just like that guy that dumped a whole Bugatti just didn't want to do any maintenance. We are social creatures. In life, you need social relationships for you to remain sane and stable. In relationships, you need to be sensitive towards other people. You need to be accountable and responsible. It goes both ways. Others owe you and you owe others. For the reprobate, it's all about them escaping. Again, they are in a permanent survival mode where it's all about them. So they perceive anything and anyone who wants that challenges their escape as an enemy. So you, as a human being, you never matter to the reprobate. What matters to the reprobate is what they can get out of you. Remember, you, as a human being, never matter to the reprobate. Only what they can get out of you matters. So how do you deal with these people? You simply don't deal with them. You avoid them as much as possible. Because there's no way you can ever get good outcomes with them. So, don't mystify the topic of narcissism, sociopathy, psychopathy, like they're doing on many places on, on the internet. There's this whole obsession with narcissists and narcissism on YouTube. Don't follow that trend. It's easy. A reprobate is a human being whose spiritual stability is fully gone, psychologically and emotionally. They have no off switch. That's why, for example... A common individual being a bit mean, saying mean stuff, eventually, either, eventually, when they're asleep at night, whatever, it's going to bother them. And if they've been doing it for a while, they have a different time to look at themselves. That's healthy that they feel that way, that, because then now they're pushed for change. With a reprobate, this internal break, as I call it, doesn't work anymore. So they'll still mean and mean, they'll say mean stuff and it gets worse, worse and worse. And the only time they stop is someone knocks either, uses physical violence on them as, as retaliation or they're arrested by the police. Or, or they see they're about to lose their job and become homeless. So only the prospect of, uh, uh, of being injured or being injured stops them. So they don't experience any empathy towards you. Now they do have empathy, but all the empathy is for themselves. They don't experience any empathy towards you let alone compassion. Such an individual is capable of, of actually attacking you, even murdering you, and then they feel like they're the victim for, as if you made them do it. They don't operate in reality because they don't want reality. They hate reality. Because reality shows them you can't always escape in life. In life, you need to own up to stuff Take responsibility, become accountable, and also learn to be far books to other people. The reprobate, because they know they're not acceptable, they know how unstable they are, and know that nobody in the right mind put up with it, they will always look for people they have a leverage over to take advantage of. The reprobate always wants to have a leverage over other people so that others can easily uh, abandon them, because they know eventually nobody was going to stay with them with that attitude. So why don't you just change? Again, they have to admit things they don't want to. So they are their own worst enemy, damaging themselves and others in the process. They're evil. So such individual, that's what they are. Accept what they are. Accept what they've become. You're not approving what they've become. You're not condoning what they've become. So once you accept what they've become, now you know what you're dealing with, and now you take proper steps to keep yourself and others safe from this individual. Simple as that. It's not that the reprobate lacks love. And now by giving a lot of love and affection, you can love the, the evil out of them. No, they're evil because they refuse to be of quality. A human being that wants to be of quality eventually becomes better and safe to be around. A human being that's all about escaping unconditionally, they don't even care about quality. They only care about quality when, when they're getting quality in behavior from other people. But they themselves don't want to be of quality. They don't want any obligation to be of quality. So that's why they're evil. Scope what it is, they're evil. They're dangerous 
to even be around. If you call these type of people out, they'll never forget. You call them out, force them to look at themselves. That's extremely painful for them to look at themselves. And so now they're going to blame you for doing that. So now they're going to take revenge on you. So beware with calling out narcissists, sociopaths, and psychopaths, please. Beware with doing that. It goes so far to even think that the father himself has to shut his damn mouth and let him do whatever he wants to do. Look, nobody is born a reprobate. Anybody becomes a reprobate by accident. Reprobation is a, is a dedication to go against reality and to not own up to your human obligations towards other people. So they're turning themselves into demonic creatures. Just like fallen angels became demons by their own uh, refusal to comply with the Heavenly Father, to comply with justice, the same way these people are becoming demonic. They become demonic humans. So you can't laugh the evil out of them. There are enough people out there who, when we were, who were severely traumatized as children, even neglected as adults, and they didn't develop this bitterness turned into reprobates. Reprobates are bitter because the reality requires them actually to be responsible. I mean, if you buy some clothes, you need to wash your clothes from time to time. You can't just buy clothes and continue to throw them away anytime you need to wash them. People say this is wasteful. Or let's say you haven't vacuum cleaned in your house for, 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 a, for a few days and now there's dust everywhere. Are you going to get upset and attack your own house and leave your house? No, you're going to clean it up. But that's the thing with the reprobate. When it comes to the physical, they still have to fight fight or flight response and the physical balance, but they have no spiritual balance. They have no psychological and, and emotional offspring. You don't have that. Now, male reprobates still have a little bit of restraint in them. Female reprobates do not. By the way, they're both reprobates. What I'm saying is, if someone is a reprobate, accept they've become, but don't condone it nor support it. Stay away from them as soon uh, as quickly, as, remove yourself from them as, as quick as possible. Stay away from them as much as possible. You can pray for them from a distance, they repent and become better. Maybe something will turn, but don't waste too many prayers on them. Okay, because they're hell bent already. So, where the reprobate is one of your own children or your parents or God forbid your spouse, whatever, or someone at work or, or someone at church, doesn't matter. Avoid reprobates. And if you're married to one, I would recommend you to go to therapy in order to separate this individual as soon as possible because you'll never end up well with an individual like that. Reprobates are murderers. They are toxic liars, cowards, and murderers. They may not take your life directly by shooting you or stabbing you or beating you up or whatever, but they will orchestrate life to, to get worse and worse on you to trigger events, to get you become homeless, addicted, uh, or they'll even try to push you towards suicide indirectly. These people are next level harmful. So don't underestimate it. Don't think, oh, I can handle this. No, you can't. And if, if you could handle it, why, do you, why, why do you even want to handle it? Reprobates can only function if they have an outlet for the unrest because them being in this permanent survival mode, having no stability with others psychologically, emotionally, it brings forth pollution inside of them. And they need to, to pour out this pollution or else the pollution stays inside of them and they crash mentally, emotionally, eventually physically. They become suicidal. So a reprobate is always on the risk of suicide. They are. Because if they can't have an outlet for that unrest, the unrest begins to devour them on the inside. Now, I'm not, saying, I'm not saying that every suicidal individual is a reprobate. Hey, and if you're suicidal, listen to this, get your help immediately. Get, go to therapy immediately. Call a therapist or a psychiatrist immediately and get the help you need. Okay, your life matters. Okay, apart from that, understand this. Reprobates are demonic human beings that damage and harm themselves and they drag everyone else with them in it. You, there's nothing you can do about them being a reprobate. There's nothing you can do about that. You can't, you can't change them for the better. What you can do is that you become better and you learn to recognize such people, avoid them, and move on in safety. If you were married to this individual or is one of your parents or one of your children, whatever, take the losses and move on.
If one of your parents is a reprobate and keeps seeing them as mom and dad, I'm sorry. They're not mom and dad anymore. They turn to a demonic creature. They turn to a demonic creature. They forfeit their humanity, just keep escaping. How the heck are you staying with an individual like that? Okay, if one of your parents are a reprobate, it can be in the past. They were good towards you and all that. Well, that human being is gone. This is what they become now. See it for what it is. Again, a reprobate can become saved. They can be redeemed, but it's very rare for reprobates to ever become redeemed or saved. You can still pray for them if you want from a distance, but don't waste too many prayers on them. All right? Well, that's it for now. Keep on agreeing with Christ. And remember, hit the like button, share this video, subscribe to the channel, become a member of the channel. Don't forget, donate in the links below. If you, want, if you wish to contribute to the fund of my PhD, write PhD with your donation. Thank you. And check my novels on Amazon also. There are more upcoming. And hey, I'll see you next time. Shalom.